we designed it, redundancy right at the corner. Remember, they're called PoE power switch. Powered is the keyword. Hi tech enthusiasts, welcome back to fast cabling. So imagine a warehouse that never sleeps. Robots picking 24-7, Wi-Fi humming, camera watching every aisle, and phones that never missing a call. Our client runs exactly that. And they asked us a big question. How do we power and connect dozens of devices without turning the building into a jungle of cables and power brakes? So their pain was familiar. Cameras, access points, and VoIP phones scattered across multiple floors, miles of Ethernet, and way too many power injectors. So we needed one approach that simplifies power and data, tames cable chaos, and avoid ripping open walls. So we went with, you know, power over Ethernet. One cable that sends both power and data to each device is cleaner, faster to deploy, and safer to maintain. So power over Ethernet has different levels. PoE and PoE Plus cover most phones and cameras, while PoE++, also called 802.3 BT, can push up to about 95 watts for heavier heaters like PDZ cameras or Wi-Fi 7 access points. And we'll use PoE++ at the core and the right size PoE at the edge. Then our client asked us, why not just run everything from one giant switch? Good question. Running every single device straight from a central switch sounds simple until you add distance and power loss. So instead, we place small SS switches where devices live, and the mezzanines in corners of the floor near clusters of cameras. And that keeps cable run short, reduces voltage drop, and let us scale one zone at a time without shutting down the whole operation. So let's meet our edge workhorse. Our four port managed PoE power switch has a 65 watts total power budget and can deliver up to 30 watts per port with web smart features like VLANs and QoS for traffic shaping. It even doubles as a multi port PoE extender to push reach to 200 meters in the right setup. So now let's wire it. So I've placed three PoE power switch so we can connect to multiple devices. First of all, we have to power it up by using this AC outlet. So now we get the power and the data will be from our single uplink. This connects directly to our main switch. Now we can send both power and data to our connected devices like the SS point and VoIP phone. You can see they're getting power and data. For our second switch, we're doing the same thing. Uplink from the main switch at the control center, then connect to a bullet camera. And this one is going to connect to a PDZ camera. And don't forget to connect the uplink from our main switch. So you can see all our connected devices are getting power and data at the same time. And when you look at the video, we can see it's live. But warehouses aren't email to power hiccups. So we designed it redundancy right at the corner. Remember, they're called PoE power switch. Powered is the keyword. It takes in PoE from upstream and passes PoE out to your devices. So you can give it AC and power over Ethernet. If the building AC goes down, the PoE feed from upstream takes over instantly. So your camera stays alive your access points keep client connected, and your phones don't drop. And that's a business continuity without a generator at every closet. Now gets to the fun part. We're going to stimulate a power cut. It is getting PoE from our upstream switch, 
So now I'm going to unplug the AC outlet. Here we go. As soon as I unplugged it, you can see the power over Ethernet kicks in. The devices still up, and that's the advantage of PoE powered SS switching with pass through. Here we go. Looking at the monitor, even though the power is out, our bullet camera still works perfectly fine. And now let's chase the uplink back to the heart of our network, the core switch. We size the core not just for port counts, but also for power. Those SS switches are able to draw PoE and the endpoints behind them draw PoE too. Add them up and you get your real power demand. And you should always plan with margin so you're not flirting with brownouts when everything spins up. So let's officially meet our 24 port 720 watts L3 managed PoE++ switch with 4 SFP plus of lengths. Our central power and data engine. So why use this model? First, 720 watts of total PoE budget give us headroom to fit multiple PoE power switch and their downstream devices. Second, the four 10 gig SFP plus link for future proof if our clients wants to upgrade to fiber later. And third, it's layer three managed. So we get VLANs, QoS, link aggregation, SNMP, the tools to segment traffic and keeps everything performance and observable. So as you can see, the main switch is connected to the network video recorder and we have three cables connected to our three pass-through switch. We spec PoE++ at the core because it future-proofs your network for high-power devices and it ensures the upstream can reliably fit those PoE-powered SS switches. Alright, let's sanity check power. Let's say one SS switch connects to two 8 megapixel cameras at about 13 watts each, and a Wi Fi 6 SS point at 18 watts, and a PoE phone at about 8 watts, and we'll call it 52 watts in total. And our 4 port PoE power switch has 65 watts to share, so we're good. Now, do this for every cluster. If we have, let's say, 10 clusters averaging 52 watts, and that's 520 watts total draw. And our core switch has 720 watts budget, covers it with room to spare. So you should always include startup peaks and the cable loss in your margin. And some of you may wonder, what about the areas outside? Loading docks, perimeter gates, or parking? Well, actually, there is an outdoor PoE pass-through switch option with 8 ports and an IP67 enclosure, a 95 watts total power budget, delivering up to 30 watts per port, and surviving minus 25 degrees up to 60 degrees. It can be mounted to a pole or a wall and extends PoE out where AC is a pain. So this is perfect for instructors external cameras or outdoor access points. So the recipe is simple. Use PoE at the edge for clean install and reach. And use PoE++ at the core for capacity and growth. The SS switch's PoE pass-through fan power out to cameras, SS point, and phone. If AC is present, great, dual sources. But if AC drop, the PoE backs up and keeps everything alive. And don't forget, both our switches are managed, so we can use VLANs to segment traffic, cameras, access points, and office LAN, so each has the security and performance it needs. 
and feel free to drop your questions in the comment section below, especially if you're planning a 24-7 facility with mixed devices. And if this video helped you think differently about power and switching, please give it a like and subscribe for more real-world builds. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'll see you in our next one.